In February 2005, I met Shirin Ebadi. She was the first Iranian woman to be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. I told her about my uh, movie topic, I mean, read a womanly story, uh, and if I could uh, interview her uh, in, my, in my movie. I proposed that she talked about current events, issues facing young uh, people, and also my uh, movie's topic. Um, she agreed to be involved and uh, 200 people were involving to making of that film and I was at age of 17. Uh, I was telephoned uh, to report to the Ministry of Culture and Guidance. Uh, when I went there I was interrogated with people who told me were from the intelligent organizations. I was asked uh, why Shirin Ebadi was participate of my film and how I convinced her to take a part. I was asked why my movie um, devoted from the movie permission of production. Um, I was called to do attend uh, at their office for 10 times. Uh, the first time was three others, but it usually between um, it usually lasted between one to two hours and I was asked why I made that film and who asked me to uh, for, to making that movie and who was supporting me and also I was asked uh, if I was gay otherwise how I could understand this topic I had to completely deny as being gay uh, I was getting warning that I should not produce the movie. When I made movies in Iran, I had to take a responsibility for everything in the movie uh, because some involved in produce, m producing movies or contributed professionally were too afraid to have uh, their name associated with movie. Uh, it means it was even more dangerous for me uh, to making movies because I bore all responsibility. In 2005, I've done another short film called Final Show. This short comedy considers how a two-minute rush to the toilet can seem like an eternity with humorous results. And uh, also in 2005, I've done another film, actually, which was my second feature film, called Eight People Tango. Eight People Tango seeks to lift the veil on issues faced by young Iranians. Four boys and four girls discuss a range of topics, including sex, women in sport, relationships, voting, culture and politics. شخصی زندگی منو بدونی تقریبا تو که در جریانش بودی مادر من یه آدم فوق العاده خاصیه که ولش کنن رئیس جمهور میشه one girl talks openly about being raped then bashed by her father as punishment 
This documentary was filmed using three cameras over a continuous seven hour period. The controversial nature of the film meant it could not be shown in Iran. This censorship led Borna to make the most important decision of his life. In 2009, I've done another film called Sex and Religion. Uh, this movie it has not completed yet, but it will be soon. Sex and Religion is the story of an Iranian boy from a conservative village who travels to Australia as an international student. The boy struggles to come to terms with the social, religious and cultural differences between the two countries. At the same time he comes to terms with his homosexuality and is determined to find out as much information as he can. His quest for knowledge, however, leads to him being taken advantage of by others who desire nothing more than casual sexual encounters. In May 2010, I've done my third uh, future film, which is called My Beautiful Life. Uh, the story of this movie concerns about uh, people who, may, uh, who deals with cancer. Uh, it was such a fantastic experience for me. And actually this movie was uh, my very first film after being away from cinema and Iran, which is almost for five years. Life is not fair. I didn't want to talk to anyone. Family, friends, I left my job. It seems like it was their fault. In May 2011, Borna completed production of his third feature-length film, My Beautiful Life. Filmed in Australia, this emotional story follows the journey of a young man who was diagnosed with cancer and his determination to beat his illness. My Beautiful Life shows how the human spirit can triumph even in adversity. This was such a really, really fantastic and great experience for myself and who were involved in making this movie. Uh, during the shooting time, we really enjoyed a lot and I would say thanks from my uh, lovely, positive and small crew. Uh, I wish for every single person in the world to have a wonderful and beautiful life.
In 2011, Boyne gained Australian citizenship and with it, the freedom to tell his story. After nearly five years, he now hopes to be reunited with his family.